Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about a topic uh, I get questioned about from time to time. Uh, and that's being able to display uh, a device like a right-angled head in your verification uh, inside of NXCAM. Uh, so now this is going to be directed towards uh, users that, that uh, do not need this capability often. Uh, this is kind of a, a little bit of a workaround in the system. Um, so in this, uh, this case, I just have a simple uh, radius part that has some, some holes. You can see they don't go around to the outside diameter, uh, just on the inside. And I want to be able to verify that my right angled head is going to be able to go and fit into here. Uh, and now the reason I say that this is not intended for users that are going to be uh, using their right angled heads extensively, uh, I would really then suggest that uh, in that scenario that you want to use uh, simulation inside of inside of NX, uh, the integrated simulation and verification, uh, to ensure that uh, if your tool changing heads and, and uh, all your clearances and, and things like that, uh, that, that there's, they're all collision and, and gouge free. Uh, so again, for the for the occasional use, uh, I'm going to show uh, how you can set up a tool just to display it in verification. Uh, so in, in uh, what I'm speaking to is just when you're doing your normal uh, verify, whether it's a uh, uh, you know just the replay of the tool path, something like that. Okay, so we have a uh, we have a part uh, right now, um, and I have a tool created already. Uh, so let me go to my library. I'll go ahead and create tool, uh, retrieve tool from library, and uh, if I go to my drilling tools, uh, I know this is a six millimeter drill, uh, and here I created a tool called uh, right angle demo tool. So let me just bring that in, and you can see I have my tool. Uh, nothing special here. I have uh, my tool described in NX. Uh, I have a, a holder described in NX. Um, all ready to go, um, and if I I could actually program this right now, that that maybe we should do that. I'll go ahead and create an operation. Uh, just do a oh, drilling operation. Have my right angle demo tool uh, drilling. Yep, all that looks good. Uh, here we go. And I'll go through and make my uh, geometry selections. Uh, of course, I could. Use fine features for this, but uh, for this demo, it's quick enough just to select. I don't know, maybe what do we have here? 10, 12 holes, something like that. 14 holes. All right, and I'll generate that. Uh, those uh, non-cutting moves are a little bit ugly. Let me just go ahead and change some clearances here. Right. All right, so that looked better. So we can see uh, I'm able to go in with my tool and uh, drill these holes. But if we're think saying that we're on a three-axis machine right now, uh, clearly this would not uh, work. We wouldn't be able to, to drill like this. Uh, so this is where we would need a right-angled head. Okay, so I have my tool path laid out. I have my actual drilling tool uh, created, uh, but now what I want to do is is be able to just have a, a visual aid in seeing my, my right angled head. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export uh, a solid model of my tool assembly. Uh, so here in the, in the machine tool view, uh, my operation navigator, I'm going to right click on my tool and I'll come down to object export part. Uh, so here, this is going to allow me to export the part somewhere. Um, actually, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up here. Um, if you edit, uh, create this tool, or I'm sorry, in the tool dialog, if you come to library and you choose export part, tool part file. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and export this to library. Uh, and you see, I already have this tool created, but right now I'm going to say replace. I just want to create this uh, library reference. Okay, so that's updated. Let me show you what that did. If 
bring up uh, Windows Explorer here. I'm going to go to my, I'm working on NX 1926 right now. Uh, so I'm going to my Mac Resource Library uh, tool. And if I look at my graphics folder, uh, what well, was just created, here it is, 7.57 a.m. Okay, that was one minute ago. I created a folder with this graphics file. Uh, if I go ahead and open this part file, uh, we can see it actually has whatever uh, whatever was in the, oh, that's not the right file here, demo tool, yep. <coughs> Sorry, let me uh, open that again, demo tool. You can see it actually has <laughs> all the part geometry and everything like that. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this part file. I really just created the reference uh, in this case. And now I'm back in my demo part file and I'm going to export. So I'm going to do object, export part, and I'm going to navigate back to that same folder. So let's see here, we're going to go to Siemens, C drive, Seam, no, nope, program files, Siemens, 1926, mock, resource, library, um, tool, and my graphics. So here I have this location, uh, and I'm going to save my RA demo tool, let's put underscore in there. So I haven't done this in a while, and I feel like the, the part file that I uh, exported it originally should have had all the tool data in there, but it but 1926 it's not doing that. Um, so I need to look into see if this is a uh, a bug or not. So I'm just renaming the the part file that I exported manually, and I'll delete the original the original tool there. So in the end, what I ended up doing here, this RA demo tool, if I open that part file, it's just my tool. Uh, that's really what I wanted to see here. So it gave me uh, a part file. Uh, if we go into my part navigator, you can see create revolved features uh, for this tool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna modify this file and I'm gonna bring in a right angled head. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to use assemblies and add a component. And if I go back to uh, my uh, mock resource library uh, folder, there's a out of the box, there's this device folder in uh, graphics. And there's a number of different heads that come um, with the standard installation. And I'm just going to go ahead and use one of those right now. Uh, so the Sim09 adapter head, this is a nice right angle head. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select this part file, press OK, and I'll just go ahead and uh, use some constraints to position uh, this right angle head in relation to my tool. So I'll just do a couple touches, uh, infer center axis there. Press OK. I think I need to add in a uh, datum thesis and make one more constraint. So you can see right now I can rotate this uh, this assembly. So let me go through and just do one parallel. And we might have to change the orientation of this uh, geometry here. So now I have this assembly. Uh, in my in my tool graphic file. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and jump back to my part file where I programmed this. Go ahead and regenerate my tool path. And I'm going to go to verify. And so normally default option is tool. Uh, but if I go to assembly you can see it references that graphics file and pulls in that geometry. So now we can go ahead and, and play this and we can see that we could actually visually see any clearance issues. Uh, it's important to note using this method it's purely uh, a visual check. 
Um, if you if you have uh, collisions turned on uh, in your operation, it is not going to look at that uh, right angle head. Um, that that's uh, that's not how this method works at all. Purely just visual. Uh, so you have to spend a little bit of time. Uh, and again, that's another reason why I say this is really for the occasional use. So now we have the, the visual aspect handled. Um, but in order to use um, a right angled head, uh, we need to, to provide that the offset uh, values. Uh, again, just let me back up here. So we need to know really the offset between uh, my tool mount position um, and the tool mount position of the right angled head. Uh, so there's there's some offset values here uh, as well as a, as a vector that we need to specify to NX. Uh, so you don't need to use a graphic to make this work, um, but it's uh, in conjuncture, we can get the post output to be proper uh, along with uh, a visual representation. So here I'm going to create a head. Um, this is under create tool and create head. And so this is where I would have to specify my offsets. So in, in X, um, I haven't measured this head, so I'm just going to uh, guesstimate 25 millimeters in X, uh, 0 in Y, and Z uh, maybe, about a, maybe about 200 millimeters. Uh, but you can see that uh, you have a little graphic legend here uh, depicting what you need. Uh, and then as well as uh, applying a, a vector uh, from the spindle axis. Uh, so 0, 0, 1 uh, would be a vector in, 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 z, in the z-axis, uh, which is default uh, for your milling spindle. And if I go uh, 1, 0, 0, that's going to be saying that my vector is in the x direction. And now I can go ahead and drop that tool inside of here. Uh, and so you have to make sure your post is set up to, to work with a, uh, a head device like this to give you the proper offsets. Uh, really, it's just going to apply those uh, offset values uh, to your, your posted output. Uh, so you have to be very accurate with um, those head values. Uh, and again, this is depending on your machine tool, uh, how, how you teach your tools and, and things like that. So um, we're just really talking about from NX uh, point of view here. So altogether, we now have the ability to verify and visually see uh, if there's any collisions or, or uh, things that we might be uh, concerned about with using right angle heads. Uh, and I think you could use this same strategy for a number of different uh, applications. Thank you.